So Ronnie in our chat said, Scott, you think the Padres are sellers now? I'm like, forget me. Let's ask Ken because I know you've been covering this and, and really thinking about this because I know you've written about how much they could do like in terms of selling if they do. But I mean, they're further out of the playoff spot than the Angels are. Now, I think they have a better chance still of making it. But where are we on the Padres? Is it a day to day situation? I believe it is. And a lot of teams right now are in that situation. The Angels are in that situation. The Mets, to an extent, are in that situation, even though it certainly looks like they'll be sellers. You can talk about the Cubs, looks like they'll be sellers. Not totally decided yet on any front, because it doesn't have to be decided yet. We're on July 18th. The deadline's August 1st, almost two weeks away. Actually, it is two weeks away. So. There is still time for some of these teams to kind of reverse course. And let's face it, with the Padres and the Mets, we've been waiting all season for them to perform the way they were expected to perform. If the Padres start doing that, they're not going to sell. They're averaging 41,000 in home attendance. They've got tickets sold for the rest of the year. They do not want to sell. They want to compete. They want to try. But my point in what I wrote yesterday was that if it's not looking promising for them, then they could control this deadline in a different way than they've controlled deadlines in the past because they'd have arguably the best starting pitcher available, or one of them, Blake Snell, another good starting pitcher, Seth Lugo, the top closer, Josh Hader, and if you wanted to keep going, you could trade Juan Soto, who has a year of control left but still would have a lot of value, and if you're trading those other three guys, you're probably not signing Soto to an extension. He's a Scott Boris guy, likely will go to the open market, it might behoove you to do that as well. So if they do decide to pivot and AJ Preller, their general manager, hasn't ruled it out, just as general managers don't rule anything out this time of year, then they would be a very interesting team in terms of what they could offer. Do you think there's a blame game that's going to take place there soon? AJ Preller is getting close to a decade of time there. Whether it's him or, or someone else, I mean, the owner... Is, is a star. I mean, he's spending money on the team. He has captured the city, like you mentioned, with the attendance, the star power. They've certainly built up you know, quite a farm system over the years, and they've traded many of those players away in order to make themselves better. They handed out extensions like Oprah was giving out cars on her show back in the day or whatever. But eventually, I know if I was running a team, I'd be like, this is someone's fault because this team looks way too damn good. Is it ma a GM, manager? What do you think's going through ownership's head in a situation like this right now? Well, the owner, Peter Seidler, has been extremely loyal to A.J. Preller and generally speaks extremely highly of A.J. Preller. And the points you're making, Scott, are points that I've made in print and points others in the game have made. A.J. Preller is great at identifying talent, no question about that. Great at collecting talent, not much question about that. Is he great at roster construction, building a complete, cohesive 26-man roster? We haven't seen that. And the other part of this, going back to what you said about him being there almost 10 years, he tore it down once before. 2015-16, remember, they built up and then they tore down. How many times did the GM get the chance to tear down twice? How many times did the GM get the chance to get all of these players, trade for them? <coughs> White Sox. And no, 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 not to this extent, AJ. <laughs> and it's pretty rare when a, a GM can do this and do it over and over again, or actually twice, and still keep his job. That said, if the owner believes in AJ Preller and is still fond of him and thinks he's the guy, then he's not going to fire him. But people around the game do ask, while we're admiring AJ for his great strengths, which are great strengths, they do question his ability to put together, as I said, a championship roster. Has it happened? 